Hey folks, it's Andrew from Gemba Red. In a recent interview, Dr. Hamblin notes the importance of the systemic benefits for red light therapy. So I think this is one of the key issues in photobiomodulation. To what extent is the organ and the tissue you are shining the light the important thing? And to what extent is some systemic effects involving stem cells and blood irradiation important? That interview comes from the Pro Neuro Light channel, but today we're gonna to explore why the systemic mechanisms are so important to Dr. Hamlin and to the industry as a whole. And first of all, it explains a lot of the benefits that we get from red light therapy. Often studies will notice that tissues deeper than the photons can reach will be getting benefits. And even more amazingly, sometimes tissues that aren't even treated in other parts of the body also get benefits like some studies showing that they treat the tibia and that improves the heart and the brain health. Um, as I say, the stem cells, uh, people like Uri Oron in Israel will shine light on the bones to mobilize the stem cells. And he'll do that to treat the heart and the brain and the kidney by shining light on the legs, which is sort of counterintuitive. But once you realize you can mobilize the stem cells from the bone marrow, or a lot of studies will treat the gut, and that also improves brain health. Most importantly, these systemic mechanisms help explain the benefits from non-contact LED panels because we know they're inherently poor penetration because you don't get the skin compression and you get the reflection losses. In that same interview, Dr. Hamblin is very clear about this too. As time goes on, the systemic effects of photobiomodulation are becoming more well accepted. Um, you know, one of these reasons for this is that the whole field is moving away from what used to be laser therapy when people had a focused laser beam and they shone it as a point on that, a joint or a wound or something into large area LED arrays. And large area LED arrays certainly deliver a lot more systemic photobiomodulation than a focused laser beam. So for example, the full body non-contact LED panels are great for that systemic therapy. And then you might want a skin contact with a more concentrated probe or cluster LED unit or laser that presses into the skin for the direct therapy. One of the better explanations that explains why non-contact LED panels do benefit deeper into the body is the cell-free mitochondria in the blood. So here is the idea, you've got all these free mitochondria in the blood and they can be activated by light. So this is one reason why when you put light onto the body, regardless of necessarily which part of the body, there's always a lot of blood flow in the skin. And this has these cell-free mitochondria <coughs> that get activated in, <coughs> in the same way as the mitochondria in the tissue, such as the brain, for instance. So no matter where you're treating on the body, it's inevitably going to get, get into the bloodstream and will have some systemic benefits. And also, wherever you shine the light in the body, you will be irradiating the blood by definition. And Dr. Hamblin even discusses how if we're trying to reach the brain, that maybe only a couple percentage of those photons actually reach the brain. But, you know, the 97 or 98 percent of light that gets absorbed more superficially by the scalp in the skin and the bone, that's not being wasted. That's all being utilized for more systemic mechanisms. So direct means you're shining it right there to study that effect, to have that effect, but the indirect effect is a confounding factor. And remember when you put the light on the head, first of all, it has to go through the scalp and there's a lot of blood flowing in the scalp. And then it has to go through the skull and there's a lot of bone marrow in the skull. Um, so by definition, before the photons get into the brain, they have to go through the blood and the bone marrow. So. so hopefully you find these systemic mechanisms very interesting, especially for the practical applications that we can get benefits deeper into the body with specific targeted sites of remote photobiomodulation into the shins, the guts, the forehead, the sternum, things like that to get the systemic benefits even into the blood, targeting the wrists or the bloodstream. The stem cells are found most proliferatively in thin, flat bones, like the hand, the tibia, the sternum, 
ribs, and you're saying it's even in the skull. Then that's in, I, I know it's in the uh, you know the small cribriform plate of the nose, but I didn't realize that it was in the thin bones of the skull. Oh yeah, I believe there's quite a lot of bone marrow in the skull. You know how you measure it comparatively, but certainly there, yes. And we can even see in a recent interview by Ben Greenfield, he also talks about applying red light therapy to the bloodstream to get a whole body effect without needing a full body panel. And we can see it's kind of not coincidental that once these guys have smaller units to sell, that they're more open-minded to the systemic benefits. I put it around my neck sometimes to <laughs> radiate all the blood going through my body when I want a full body red light treatment without actually turning on a full panel. So hopefully if we can appreciate these systemic mechanisms, then we can use lower intensity non-contact panels more responsively. And maybe if you need to combine them with a direct treatment with skin contact, then you can do that as a combination therapy to get the best of both worlds. Cranking up the intensity only produces a marginal increase in penetration, as is noted by this LLLT textbook over here. At around 808 nanometers, we actually have the best penetration into the tissue, and increasing power only increases depth of penetration marginally. And the limit to increasing intensity to improve penetration is limited by heat. Once again, here's another photobiomodulation textbook saying as much. Therefore, technically speaking, a claim such as this system penetrates deeper than others by virtue of extra high power may be true. Other factors contribute such as increased blood perfusion in case of heating at higher average output powers. And at very high temperatures, the optical properties of the tissue may change. Ablation, carbonization, etc. This means that the temperature, heating of the tissue, will ultimately be a limiting factor when increasing the power as a means of increasing penetration depth in the tissue. And here's another quote that also expands on that idea that heating limits penetration, Cooling increases penetration, and skin contact also increases penetration. Heat will increase blood flow in the tissue, and by increased absorption of light in the blood, penetration will be reduced. On the other hand, more blood will be irradiated, which can lead to positive systemic effects. Penetration of the laser can be increased by using pressure technique over skin areas. If cooling ice is used, blood flow in the area will be reduced and the light will have higher penetration rate after the application of cooling. When heating happens, that means a lot of photons are getting converted into heat and they're not being utilized for the photochemical mechanisms for photobiomodulation. But that also means it's gonna trigger thermoregulation mechanisms and increase the size of your blood vessels, increase that blood flow, which leads to more superficial absorption and less penetration. So like most things with medicine and in life, we do get a marginal increase of penetration with intensity, and then that starts to drop off as you get too much and it causes heating mechanisms. So we can see it kind of follows that inverted U-shaped curve, a biphasic kind of response. And it's not about just pushing tons of power and intensity into a non-contact panel that you're not gonna get that deep penetration anyway. So it's more important to appreciate these mechanisms and have a realistic view for what's going on and how to optimize it. And then that's how we get the best results. And make sure you go check out that full interview on the Pro Neurolite channel. Dr. Joe has a lot of great content on social media, on YouTube, on Instagram. He's got a book. He's got, you know, a great newsletter. Um, he's got some good products. So make sure you go check him out and give him a subscribe. So thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.